Hey there, booze fans. We got a brand new arrival called Dingle from Dingle County, Ireland. Yes. This is a highly anticipated, about a year and a half ago, customer brought in this tube and said, please get me this, it's delicious. So I did a little research and I found out that they made gin. Um, and we brought in the gin. We wanted to bring in the whiskey too, but we got the gin and the gin was awesome. And I was like, if they can make awesome gin, they can make awesome whiskey. So tonight we're gonna find out. Let's look at this label for a second. Single malt. Now the Irish are not famous for their single malts. That's more of a Scottish thing, right? Although recently there have been more Irish single malts, right? Bar and Uche, um, uh, Teeling, right? Tyrconnell, Sexton, right? So Irish single malts are becoming more prominent. And uh, so a, a single malt means 100% malted barley, okay? So they take the barley and they cook it. That's what Scotland does. Right, that's that's there. They're the king of single malts. When you think Scotch, you think single malts. Even though Scotland makes delicious blends that get a um, a bad reputation because of the bad the bad blends, and people are like, "Well, I had this terrible blend, so all blends are bad." But there are single malts that are bad too, and there are blends that are great, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, forever and ever ad nauseum. But this one is a single malt, and it's been finished in bourbon cast, sherry cast, port cast. Now, bourbon cast is very common. Jameson finished in bourbon cast. Bushmills finished in bourbon cast. Most scotches are finished in bourbon cast. Bourbon distilleries are supplying the entire world with barrels because bourbon uses the barrel once and then done, right? Bourbon requires brand new oak so they are selling barrels all over the world so saying something is bourbon cast finished it doesn't have that much meaning port and sherry on the other hand while they're becoming more common right are still fairly uncommon especially with irish whiskey and then triple distilled that is another irish thing right Canada does it too, but Ireland does it most famously. And what happens is in that third distillation, you're getting the cogeners out, okay, which makes a lighter, smoother whiskey. But those cogeners also contain flavor. So scotch and bourbon are twice distilled. Most a lot most things are twice distilled. Right, vodka they can distill a billion times because they're trying to just grind it down to nothing. They don't want any taste at all, right? So well, here's a hundred times distilled vodka. So this is triple distilled single malt Irish whiskey, bourbon cask, port cask, sherry cask. And unlike a lot of Irish whiskeys, it's being made at Dingle. Dingle's a distillery, right? It's new to the market, right? Ireland is set to explode there are a lot of irish distilleries that are up and running but have not crossed the pond right they've still got a bunch of stuff in barrels right so this is exciting because it's one of the first uh, of these new wave of irish whiskeys so we see here that it's not uh super dark so we know it's not a massive sherry or port bomb right uh, based on this color, I could suspect that the majority of it was finished in bourbon casks because the bourbon casks have already been used. They don't have as much color to contribute as the port and sherry. Or potentially the port and sherry casks were not first fill port and sherry casks. They might have been second or third, so they would contribute less color and less flavor. Right? Because this is not particularly dark. Um for a port and a sherry cast finish. All right, let's give her a sniff. Oh my. That is a rich and lovely nose. 
So there's my port and my sherry. <clears throat> Man, I can, this is just like ambrosia. Yeah, this smells great. We're getting all kinds of dried fruits, <clears throat> raisins. Mm. All right, let's see if it holds up on the mouth. Really easy drinking dram. Getting a lot of those dried fruits now. No real heat, still developing, still going. Outstanding. Um, yep. We are still powering through with raisin now from the port there. Uh, but with some nice baking spices underneath. Yeah, that's uh, that's tasty. And the ABV on this, 46.5. Does not drink hot at all. Take another quick sip. Yeah, so... Black pepper, a little bit of tobacco. That's all at the front and the middle. And then we're just going into those nice dried fruits. A little apricot, raisin, big raisin. And it just, <clears throat> it almost carries on like, um, like little soft vapors in your mouth, right? That are just expanding, like those 1980s Halls commercial, with that terrible sound, right? Oh, Halls is working, Dingle is working. Um, so it's a hundred dollar whiskey, but my rule on price and anything like that is, does it taste like a hundred dollars? Um, and when I think about all the different hundred dollar whiskeys, you know, is this better than Powers John's Lane, which is $80? And I would have to say that I think it is a little better than Powers John's Lane because the finish is longer and... And the proof is about the same, but I feel that the Powers is a little more heat than this does, which, you know, people like, you know, maybe you want a little, sometimes I do, sometimes I want this. Um, but would I put it above Green Spot? Yes. I would put it above Green Spot. Would I put it above Jamison 18? Yes. All right. Bushmill 16 is now way more expensive than that. And I would put it above this too. So... If a customer came in to me and said, I want to get a $100 whiskey and I don't know exactly what they like, I might very well point them to this because I really feel that it's accessible, it's approachable, it's unique, it's fun, it's different, right? Because I'm tasting, I'm tasting the bourbon notes, I'm tasting uh, the port notes, and I'm tasting a little bit of the sherry notes. And, um, and I think it's a really, it, it's complex but it's accessible and that's a that's a great balance that you want to have in a upper tier whiskey. The sad fact is a lot of upper tier whiskeys are so busy trying to prove that they deserve to be expensive that they've done something very aggressive that makes them unbalanced, right? Because they want you to know you're drinking something expensive whereas you could give this to a guest and they could be like, wow, this is awesome. I love it. And then you tell them how much it was. And they're like, wow, I don't, I don't know if it's worth that much. Yeah. Which is just, you know, it's something that amuses me on a daily basis. Right. You know, uh, today a woman came in and she was like, oh, yesterday I just had the best gin 
that I've ever had in my life. And I was like, uh, what was it called? And she said, St. George. And I said, yes, it's great, isn't it? And then she saw it was $35 a bottle. And she's like, oh, that's too expensive. Too expensive? It was the best gin of your life. So then she bought, like, New Amsterdam. It's like, okay, so here's $24 for you to not enjoy any of it. This will never make sense to me. All right, we're rambling on. Anyway, if you've come into some money or you want to suggest somebody get you a really lovely dram of whiskey, I highly recommend batch four of Dingle Irish Single Malt. Thanks for watching.